go. Me and him are gonna go do a little bit of a ruck session here. Got the new packs in. I got an XO Mountain Gear, a K4 5000. He got a Kafaru. We're just gonna get out there and see if we can't break them in a little bit today. We got an area around our house that's got a nice lake to walk, and uh, also got a real steep hill by it that we're probably gonna pack up and down a few times just to try to get those legs a little bit closer but only a month out now so we're getting really close and it's time to start dialing things in and making sure our gear lists are ready. Our annual 1200 mile trek out to Colorado is finally here. We take off work a few hours early and squeeze everything into the bed of the truck. With the help of some ratchet straps, we secure the load and we're on our way. Did you get any sleep yet? One hour. Nice. Did you? It's an hour more Did you drive? Yeah, he drove to you. We're about uh, 862 miles in. Six highway traffic cones down. <laughs> the 18 hour drive is full of elk talk, energy drinks for whoever is behind the wheel, and snoring for those who are capable of trusting the driver. The trip requires three stops for gas, two stops for food, and an occasional stop for a pee break. Me and Nico are freezing our butts off. Came from the 85 degree weather to the 140. I brought a jacket. I don't know why they wouldn't bring a jacket. It goes in short. Just getting loose. He's got a whole tool kit. We're backpacking, but you wouldn't know it. <laughs> Heading in for six, six and a half, maybe seven days, maybe five. Probably two after I shoot one tomorrow. We finally arrive at the trailhead ahead of schedule, and in typical fashion, Jordan and I immediately begin taking shots at the target and shots at one another. As only a few may know, we have a history of fighting on these trips. I would say that my level of overpreparedness and his level of underpreparedness tend to clash. However, we have the same goal in mind and know that we can trust each other to survive the mental and physical toll that this week-long expedition takes. We band together as the week goes along, similar to a pack of hungry wolves. All right, we are headed in. How many days are we going? Six? Hopefully six. Until we kill one. Yeah, maybe Se seven. Season ends in six days, so no more than six. The weather's pretty cold. We're already freezing our ass off, so uh, we're going to get down to camp. We're going to land on some of this pack. Take a nap. Yeah, get camp set up. Get in our little spike camp. We'll be ready to hunt tonight. Hopefully. grab that camera we got Nico behind the camera better batter hey first time ever having a cameraman with us so hopefully this time we actually get an elk to where you can see it in the screen so that's a big hopefully was that a shot at somebody it wasn't didn't? a shot at anybody it's just a shot at somebody who didn't last week. Hey, we feel terrible because every time we put a video out you can't see anything so it's like we're just making this stuff up but this year we're gonna see one go down on video For this hunt, a spike camp is our method of choice. This will be our base station for the week. 
We are roughly three miles in from the truck, but have lost 1,200 feet of elevation. This location puts us close to a water source and keeps us at the same elevation as the horse trail which we came in on and allows us to cover a lot of ground while maintaining roughly the same elevation. After getting camp established, we set out on a scouting mission to a nearby vantage point. We hope to hear a few bugles or spot a few elk filtering into the meadows as the sun fades over the rim. Much to our surprise, we spot two black bears in the distance feeding on what we believe to be an elk carcass. Now, watching this footage play back, they might have just been regular old moo cows. Our stories will remain the same though, and our friends will never know the difference. Morning number one rolls around and our game plan is similar to the night before. We hike up to an area where Jordan and Evan had success the previous season in hopes of landing on them again. Based on experience, the bulls should be bugling much of the morning and we shouldn't be surprised to hear multiple bulls from our location. We take a few hours to sit in glass while sipping our instant coffee and scarfing down some breakfast. To our surprise, the bulls aren't making much of a sound. It's oddly quiet in the basin besides a considerable wind rustling through the oak bush. So it's day one. We just got to the spot we killed the bull in last year. Um, we found a bunch of sign in here last year. Um, and there were a lot of bulls in here last year. They seem to be really quiet this morning. We haven't heard any bugles, so we think they're quiet. So we're going to try to find a way to some of these meadows on the other side of some of these creeks and oak brush. Because last night we saw a lot of animals coming out to the meadows right at dark. So we have all day to kind of find our way over there. Um, try to ambush one this evening or maybe call one in midday. So. We're going to watch Nico eat bacon all day too while we starve. Nico brought bacon somewhere. Like I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that was allowed. I thought you had to eat like really bad camp food and cliff bars and take like, taste like cardboard. But apparently you can bring bacon. As the sun gets higher, we decide to make our way back down towards camp. And just as we are hitting the trail, there it is. We hear our first bugle. The bull sounds off a couple times on the opposing hillside, allowing us to pinpoint his location quickly. The bugles sound terrible, much like us trying to call one in. And we are able to spot the raghorn bull at roughly 800 yards in the oak bush. This raghorn brings us to our next argument. Is the bull legal? I argued the bull needed to have four points on one side, while Jordan argued that the bull only needs to have a four inch brow tine to be considered legal. Lucky for us, we had enough time to message a friend through our Garmin GPS and he typed out the rule word for word. It turns out we were both wrong, but I will admit Jordan was in fact closer to being correct. The bull is required to have a single five inch brow tine. Lesson learned. Be 100% certain in the rule book or take a picture of the applicable page on your phone before you lose service. Now that we had brushed up on the rule book, it was time to make our way over to the bull as quickly as possible and get right in his lap before he bedded up for the day. This sucks. You can't train more. Once we got close to our onyx pen where we marked him at, we spread out about 100 yards apart and cow called off and on to each other for about an hour. <coughs> the bull never made another sound. The rest of day one featured some exploring, snoring, and watching Jordan perfect his water system that he talked oh so much about. <laughs> we attempted another setup on the bull that evening and even heard him sound off a few times, but we just couldn't get close enough to get a shot. It sounded like he skirted us around 250 to 300 yards, and that was the end of our day one excitement. Day one, we heard a bull, saw a bull, got the bull on camera. We found where he was bedding, got back on him tonight, but he went the other directions. Not a bad first day. Tomorrow we're gonna find a bigger bull, See a bigger bull. This time I'll kill him. Nico eating. Ramen noodles. Is that your go-to? What flavor? Little champions. What flavor? I think we got chicken tonight. Doing tuna. With some um, hickory smoked tuna in there. Really looking forward to it. <laughs> it was pretty good last time. 
On day number two, we decide to set our alarms for 2.30 a.m. and hike to a new location to scout it out for the day. One thing became clear as the sun started to rise. This area is saturated with bulls. We heard multiple bulls sound off above us and below us on the long walk in. We also discovered that the moo cows were out to hurt us. Nico and I had an extremely aggressive cow attempt to flatten us in the trail. We found trees to protect us, but the cow was relentless. He attempted to get us with a sneak attack from behind, and then he made a circle through the brush and ended up getting between us. This moment seemed to last for an hour, but in reality, it was probably only two minutes. According to an article from Cowboy State Daily, statistically, cows pose a much greater threat to Americans than bears and sharks combined. Cattle reportedly killed roughly 20 people each year in the United States, while fatal bear and shark attacks average about two per year for each species. While all this is going on, Jordan, being the speedwalker that he is, found himself inching closer to a bugle. When we caught up with him, he had no idea we were in distress. There was no time for storytelling though, as we found ourselves a few hundred yards below a bugling frenzy between two or three bulls. We continued to cow call and one of the bugles cut the distance in half and sounded to be right on top of us. We were standing in a fairly open patch of oak bush, planning our next move when I spotted the mature bull standing a mere 120 yards away on the hillside above us. I yelled to the guys to not make a move as the bull was locked on to our location because of the cow calls. By the time we were able to move and get the camera up, the bull had slipped back into the shadows and pushed back up the hillside. He was able to see from his vantage point above us that the cows he came looking for were not present, and that alone kept him alive. Jordan and Nico pushed up the hill right on his trail and gave him one last desperation bugle, <coughs> which he returned from a much greater distance away. The bull won this battle, but he led us to our greatest discovery yet, a wallow located along the path that the bull had recently been on. Sorry to take off on you. Oh, feud. Oh Answer God. your GPS. It's not even on. Well, that would help. Oh, when it dropped down. <laughs> Message you like 12 times. Oh, what would you say? Like, is he hung up? Sorry. Update me. I probably wouldn't have looked at it. I was right behind. Would have helped. But either way, what do you do? Just keep going up? He's, uh, there's, it opens up up there. It's wide open and they got a nasty wallow on the top of that hill. Our plan for the entire next day was settled at that moment. Having confidence in that plan and the lack of daytime action because of a full moon, we decided to head back to camp for the remainder of the day and get rested back up for the 2.30 a.m. wake up call and the long hike ahead. Hey cow, get out, move. Watch out for him, he'll be coming back for some more probably. We're starting to have issues with cows. Me and Nico almost got trampled already this morning. Nico, tell me if that, that cow, how that happened this morning. Did he not sneak up yeah. on us? He was coming right behind us and started running. Yep. I pretty much dove off the trail. We both got behind trees because what else is going to stop a cow, you know? But, yeah, we're having issues right now. We can't even sit down for a mid-morning snack without getting trampled. You guys ready? Yeah. You ready, Jordan? All right. Oh. oh. oh.
would want dinner. Sure, he's in the frame. I see him. Pop him. We'll get it. This will be a great video. Steady. I hit him, but <laughs> I just didn't hit him. <laughs> Should have used my gun. I've got a nine. Yeah, I think I blew him up. This is a 45. It should have been the trip. I just didn't hit him yet. Three of them. The one I'm kidding you not walk from me to that rock, walk across, <laughs> and I almost like tried to run up and kick him. I miss him. I guess it's I free stride for dinners <laughs> for dinner to get tonight. Aim at his head, shoot his aim for the yeah. center of the body. It's alright. Hey. 100% of the shots you don't take and 100% of the shots you do take with this gun because I am not very good. It's alright. I got a mouse. I wish I had something. It's just our morning interview. Yeah. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning. We got up extra early. I found a wallow yesterday that had bulls. I'm pretty sure they were all in it. Um, Cause they were just bugling and it sounded like a rut fest. Um, so we kind of went up midday and checked out an area and found a wallow that's just been um, beat to hell basically. So we're gonna sit right on top of it. Um, pretty much all day it's a full moon so we think there might be some midday activity. Hunter forgot his bow. I, I stuck my foot in my mouth. So uh. Sorry, you can't shoot two at once anyways, right? So. I guess I'm shooting today. <laughs> we don't even have to flip a coin, it made it easy. But I'll kill a big one. I mean, I can't can take this bag off without just absolutely fing this off. It's been working the whole time, and then I stop. I think we have, we might have a leak. Need to check. Let's see. Tube attached. Tube detached. So I'll hold the phone. For the first time in our lives, we arrived somewhere early. When I say early, I mean way too early. We found a log to sit on, which we thought was about 40 yards or so from the wallow, and sat down to kill some time. We put our puffy jackets on and anything warm we could pull from our bags, but still froze as we sat in the dark for almost two hours. We heard multiple bulls bugle around us in the dark and argued which direction they came from just to pass some time. Shooting light was still a few minutes away when we heard the crashing of branches on the hillside above us. The snapping of limbs was coming directly to the wallow right in front of us and we began to shake from the cold and adrenaline as the elk stepped in the water only 20 yards away. Nico, don't worry about it. I'm on it. Jordan, shoot him. Shoot him. It's a cow. It's a cow. It's a cow.
it's like it looks like ten. <laughs> Jordan totally blinked out when that cow came in and he's claiming that he didn't hear me yelling shoot, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. To be fair in his defense, we heard some other bugles in the area and we thought maybe whenever she left another one was going to come right in. So hindsight's twenty twenty, but Jordan's, his memory's a little construed because of the moment that just happened. It's already on record. He wants to talk. Don't listen to his lies. We have the proof of this footage. For one, I could barely see. <laughs> That's number one. I don't even know if it was legal shooting hours. And unlike Hunter, I won't break the law. For two, there was a bull bugling within a hundred yards of us. And I thought for sure he was going to come into it. There was another bull right below us. There were two bulls bugling, buggling, and I thought they were going to come right to this thing after that cow came through. And it just didn't happen, so I did say, I did say, like, hand up, that's on me. I did say if there was a cow in front of me, I was going to shoot it. And then I didn't, so that's on me. There's two cameras. And it was a pretty good over-the-shoulder view. But nobody gets on YouTube and watches people shoot cows. So... We got three days to sit on this. A, a bull's gonna come. We might kill two. We might kill one tonight. Hunter might kill one tomorrow. And then we're gonna drive to Walmart, get Nico an over-the-counter tag. Nico's gonna come in here and shoot one, too. We're gonna flip to see who shoots them. Hunter says we're going to flip to see who shoots tomorrow. If one of us remembers. If one of us. I'm going to hide Hunter's bow. We finished out the day sitting the wallow and then made the long journey back to our spike camp. As we got close to our tents, we heard a loud bugle within 300 yards or so of our campsite. The close proximity of the bugle, the late arrival back to camp, and the lack of sleep led us to the decision to sleep a little bit longer the next morning and just hunt the bull closest to us first. After all, we still had a few more days to hunt the wallow. I almost killed my power bank last night. I didn't turn it off. You don't need power out here. We are the power. Nico, what you drinking? Having a French vanilla cappuccino. That's right. Early bird gets the worm. That's right. Got a little black rifle in here. Trying to get some caffeine in us. Get after these bulls one more day. We've had good encounters. What, three days in a row? Mm-hmm. Let's make it a fourth. The backcountry grind struck us like a bolt of lightning on day number four. It proved to be the toughest day of hunting yet. We had one opportunity at the bull that was sounding off under the full moonlight above camp the night before. He bugled right in our faces again, and we split up and surrounded him. For whatever reason though, he never made another sound and ghosted us. Are you regretting yesterday's decision to pass on the cow yet? 
One more. We still got two. We still got two more days. Nico, what do you think? You think he should have taken that shot yesterday morning? Potentially. It's hard to say. You never know what might happen. I like that. We figured out Nico's a little bit of a camp chef. He's made us all bags of oatmeal just out of the kindness of his heart. And I think he's trying to help Jordan kind of get back on. Jordan's got to get motivated. Yeah, he's he's lost a little motivation. I think yesterday's. It has nothing to do with the cow. Is that affecting you at all, though, yesterday? You're not no, second guessing? I think what's affecting me is that they're, the bulls are not bugling yeah. after dark. We kind of, we've done this before with a full moon, the first time we ever came out. And the bulls just light it up after dark. And daytime, they just bugle right off the bat. And then they shut up and bed down. And that's kind of what we're seeing now. So I'd say things have gotten a lot tougher, but we still got a good wallow to sit. Good wallow to sit. We're going to flip a coin. We're not flipping a coin. I'm sitting the wallow. Coin. This guy's running around like a mountain goat. So he, he's the one that needs to be mobile. Me and Nico can sit at the Sit at the wallow and. Flipping it. Flip it. I ain't flipping a coin. He already got to sit it once. Yeah. Yeah. That was your two choosing. camera guys. That two camera guys. That was your choosing. Even if I had my bow, you were gonna be shooting. Yeah. So. I didn't know that. I think it's my turn, everybody. You get to see me kill my first bull tomorrow, and then Jordan's gonna shoot a cow below us probably. He isn't. At this point. If I have a cow coming into wall, into that wallow, first thing, blasting it, then he is going to enjoy the hike out. He'll be cussing us. I will. <laughs> I will. It's fine. It's fine. After the early morning hunt, we went back to camp where Jordan battled through some dehydration and wisely rested while Nico and I did some exploring. Where did you find it? Down the road. <laughs> We regretted not bringing a fishing pole as we discovered a few trout unable to hide from the midday sun. Day four had our hopes dwindling as we decided that day five would be our last full day of hunting. We had one more chance to get it done. Excuse me, young man. You in there? No way across. This is Warden Officer Johnson. I'm gonna need you to come out with your pants on and your hands up. This is the last warning I'm giving you before I blow a hole inside of that tent now, son. <laughs> that was the end of another rough night of hunting full moon's really hurting us right now I think the next two nights it's going to be even more full and they've just shut up totally at dark it's like you've got an hour to hunt them in the morning and then they just bed down for the rest of the day they've been bugling all night but we're going to get back we'll set all our alarms for 2.30 hike three and a half to four miles back into a spot that they seem to be rutting pretty good and we got a wallow that we had a cow come into the other day so we're gonna hopefully get back over there in the morning and try to finish strong and see if we can't put an elk on the ground it's about go time we're on the same uh, wallow slash water hole that we were on the other morning when Jordan that cow and it's about the same time of morning they're pretty quiet we haven't heard many bugles so we're gonna sit here hopefully we don't sit here all day like last time I can't handle much of it but we're freezing our butts off so Jordan's down below us in a few meadows and probably chasing those bugles that we heard this morning so hopefully between the two of us or my dad He's on a few of them too. Maybe he'll he'll knock one down today, and we'll be uh, testing our packs out, seeing how we can handle the weight. Got Nico over here. You can't see him. Oh.
warm up. We're headed downhill. Fired up. Whoa. Too bad all our stuff's back at camp. <laughs> Me and Hunter walking over to Jordan, taking this little trail. We're down and there's a pile of blood. If you can see it, it's all over right here. It's all over that log. Looks like he's going back up in there. We haven't even talked to Jordan yet though. He's still somewhere over here. I don't know if he, he probably not, he doesn't even know the blood over here. Probably not. So, we're getting ready to run into him. I'm sure he's excited. It looks like he's bleeding pretty good. Yeah. Hey, we got, we got blood here. Um, he stepped out of that opening and gave me a full frontal shot. It's about right when the cameraman's not with you. The cameraman wasn't here. I didn't get beautiful footage. We're sitting at a wallow. I got pretty lazy. We're on day five. I didn't have the GoPro on. I didn't have the camera on. I couldn't film with this. It's all right. We're here now. Well, there's a little bit of brush in front of him. I th heard the arrow hit hard. He turned and almost fell as soon as he turned to run. Like seven miles from camp, isn't he? Not bad. We could not be farther from the road. Oh. We could not be farther. Luckily, from we've got. Well, we don't have that much time, but we got Friday, Saturday, two days. It's gonna be a I'm gonna leave my stuff right here. long 24 to 48 hours. All right, let's go find him, son. Show you where I found the blood. The next couple of hours were a roller coaster ride of emotions, especially for Jordan, as we followed the blood trail over a mile with consistent blood. At times, we could only find drops of blood along logs and rocks, and that kept us pushing. It couldn't have been. No, did you? I think we might have just jumped the bull. We've been on him for like a mile. Blood's not real great, but it's just enough to keep us going. He's just up here. We eventually approached a boulder field that was starting to surround us. I remember telling Jordan, the bull was either laying at the end of this finger of brush or he crossed the gigantic boulders and at that point we could probably yeah, call the search off like it was just a few moments later that i looked up and jordan was standing within inches of the horns he was unaware until i called out to nico to turn the camera on and told jordan to not take another step chaos then rang out dude you're just standing on him holy no. way Jordan, how did you not see him? No way. I didn't see him. I heard the flies. I almost said there's flies. You were standing on him. He could not have died. In a worse, worse spot. spot. But he's dead. Oh, oh, what a bull. Oh my god. Oh, thank Lord Jesus. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> you were trying to give up the whole time, dang it. Oh my god. How far did we track that son of a bee? Oh yeah, it had to be a mile. Look at this thing. Good job, man. Come here. Oh. Come here. Oh, good job. <laughs> you get some blood on it. Get some blood. Get some blood on you. Oh, now we got our work cut out for us, little fuck. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> Easy there. You guys, I knew you saw him, but I was like, where did they see him? Dude, you were standing on him. No you were standing on him. No way. What did I tell you like five seconds ago? I said he can't make it out of here. He he's either dead here. or he's alive. I thought you said we can't make it out of here, and I almost said, yeah, we I, can. I'm still not sure if we can make it out of here. At I'm least we have shade. Oh my god. Tomorrow's gonna be fun coming in here with the mountain lions and bears and stuff on them. This is unbelievable. This, this is, is our story, man. We've been talking about having a story every day. Who worked so hard for that? We all worked out. It's not we over. All worked. It's not even close to being over. It's just begun. Oh my god. Oh. We're so sneaky, <laughs> dude. We are. We are in the on? worst absolute space. We are in. We are on the nastiest boulder field. I don't know if Nico can pan down and see it. We're literally gonna have to go right back out the way we came. 
At least it's a little downhill, I, I guess. I don't know how to get in here. I don't know how to get out of here. Did you get the camera, Nico? He's down there. The filming one? You guys were like, get the camera on him. And I was like, oh, he must be above me somewhere. I was trying to I was trying to tell you. I was, or I was trying to tell Nico. When did I was you like, see him? You were, you were literally, you are standing right on him like this. Yeah. And I'm like, Nico, Nico, get the camera on. I saw it. I couldn't get it out of when my pocket. When did you see it? Oh, dude, Whenever just, he said Nico, I saw it. Was it was crazy. I literally, I looked down. I'll put my bow. Grab my bow. Day five. five. Day five. Day five. Um, oh, my God. It's been a long day. I can't believe we did it. Hunter and Nico sat a wallow this morning where we passed on a cow. Um, you were trying to sit the wallow, too. But I, I was. This, this Hunter talked me out of... Hunter talked me out of sitting in the wallow. He runs around like Forrest Gump as fast as he can. I'm like, and that's how we killed this one. You we need dropped, to chase the bugles. We dropped below him this morning. We kind of paralleled him for, I paralleled him for you probably did. two ridges. And finally got right up in the middle of him. Um, he come right down to me, 40 yards. He was standing broadside. There's a bunch of brush in front of him. So I was yeah, a full draw for it had to be forever. <laughs> and another bull come walking in. And the other bull kind of turned his attention, so I kind of walked up. And when I did, he heard me and he turned. He was facing right at me, 40 yards, but had a good shot at him. I didn't think I hit him. Like, I shot and I sat down. I was beating myself up. I really didn't think I hit him. <laughs> I, like, that's 100%. It was bad. I did not think I hit this bull. And they, on their way down to me, because I said I shot at a bull, we might need to look for it, but I couldn't find any blood. They found blood on the way in, coming down to me. So we've been tracking this bull for, it has to be every bit of a mile. He's gone straight uphill into, into the, the nastiest <laughs> boulder field. Uh, yeah. I don't know how we're going to get him out. To be honest with you, it might take three days. Oh. Yeah. I'm so pumped. This is, my first, this is my first bull, but now we're two for two in this camp this year. So yeah, we're going to come back every year. Next year, Hunter's going to get one. Nico's gonna get one, and we're gonna keep coming back till we all get one. Finally figured it out a little bit. Let's freaking yeah, let's uh go! let's get to work. <laughs> Take note from us on this one. Anytime you're going to hunt more than a mile away from camp, someone needs to carry the game bags, and it wouldn't hurt to have your frame pack closer, so you don't have to walk an additional seven mile loop to go pick them up. Going down. Ask us how we know. How you feeling, Jordan? It's bad. Looks good. It's all right. Straighten her back out a little bit. Nico, what time is it? It's 2.03. We're packing camp out, trying to get it to the truck, and then we're gonna hike back down in here seven miles tomorrow morning to get the meat, and then go another probably six downhill, and it's two in the morning. So, we're really having a lot of, a lot of fun steep inclines and Jordan just he's his lungs are acclimated I think used to be a Colorado resident breathing in this mountain air full of oxygen not he also didn't hike eight miles though to go back and get his stuff today but who's counting we'll see you in the morning we made it to Jordan's truck, parked at the trailhead around 3 a.m. We grabbed our sleeping bags and hopped in the cab for one of the worst nights of sleep I can recall. The following morning, we were met with reinforcements of my dad and Joe in the parking lot. 
They had been camped out at the truck all week, and unfortunately for my dad, we recruited him into making the pack out for the second year in a row. He's been saying he's going to retire from elk hunting after this year's experience, but we don't believe that for a second. With his help, we were able to finish caping out the head and debone the meat quickly and complete the 12 mile marathon back to the truck. I'll admit, the pack out makes you question why you are even doing this in the first place. But once you reach that finish line, all that self doubt and questioning suddenly disappears and you know you'll be back next September. But first, you're stopping at every single Wendy's, Culver's, Taco Bell, or Casey's General Store you can find on the long trip back to Illinois.